During ESMO 2023, I've had the pleasure of presenting our group's data, which is the Liberato 431 study, which is actually a first-line study of the use of salpicatinib versus standard chemotherapy plus pembrolizumab in patients with newly diagnosed red fusion positive non-small cell lung cancer. So by way of background, RET fusion accounts for about 2% of all non-small cell lung cancers. And previously, at least prior to the knowledge of knowing the fact that RET as a driver, for most of these patients, the standard chemotherapy will be the Keynote 189 trial or study a regimen, which will be the use of uh, pembrolizumab together with pemetrexid and uh, together with a platinum-based chemotherapy. Having said that, we've had prior uh, uh, investigations, especially in the Liberato 001 trial, where patients with RET fusion also benefited from the use of uh, RET inhibitors, specifically salpicatinib, with very good response and duration of response. So therefore, we decided to design as well as conduct this clinical trial in a phase three open label head-to-head -head comparison setting. This trial took place over uh, throughout actually the COVID pandemic uh, uh, during uh, March 2020 to 2022, uh, at which point uh, 261 patients were recruited around the world. The key findings of the study is that the progression-free survival of patients who were treated with salpicatinib is superior than those who were treated with the chemotherapy uh, plus pembrolizumab uh, treatment. Specifically, um, the progression-free survival of patients treated with salpicatinib uh, was 24.8 months as opposed to 11.2 months uh, in the chemotherapy plus pembrolizumab group. The hazard ratio was 0.46. Uh, moreover, in terms of the um, treatment, um, there was also improvement in terms of the reduction of brain metastasis uh, in these patients. Within the patient population itself, on recruitment, 20% of the patients actually had brain metastasis, which was equally distributed in the two arms. Um, but in actual fact, for the patients who actually had brain metastasis, uh, the cumulative increase in the number of brain progression was significantly lower, both in the patients who had pre-existing brain metastasis or did not have brain metastasis in the beginning in patients who were treated with salpicatinib. Specifically for patients who did not have brain metastasis but were treated with salpicatinib, after a 12-month period, only 1% of the patient developed brain metastasis, and this is as opposed to about 14% in the patients who were on the chemotherapy uh, plus pembrolizumab treatment. In terms of safety profile, this is a drug that we are already well familiarized given the fact that um, the drug is approved in over 40 jurisdictions around the world. Uh, the most common safety profile issues include uh, transaminitis, including AST, ALT changes. There have been evidence of hypertension as well as peripheral edema. These are all generally uh, well controlled with dose interruption as well as other dose modifications. The patients who had chemotherapy had the common chemotherapy toxicities, including myelosuppression. Overall, with this particular clinical trial, I think we now have evidence that the use of salpicatinib in RET fusion positive non-small cell lung cancer is an effective treatment, especially in the first line setting. And uh, there is definitely a call for us to do uh, next generation sequencing for our newly diagnosed non-small cell lung cancer patients so we could identify this 2% of patients and benefit from a much more effective treatment than standard of care that we have right now.